Hola, hola. Welcome back to another episode of Coffee with Photographers. This time I'm at the park with David Lopez, a photographer from Los Angeles, California. Hey David, how are you? Hey Neto, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. Thank you so much for for, ha uh, for, for coming here. Thanks and for having me out here. I, it's nice to be in the park for, for a change. It is, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it, the, the, the wind just feels good. I know. Um, due to the pandemic, I'm yeah. like taking precautions with you guys. Like, I want you guys to feel safe. Mm -hmm. And this is the second podcast I do outside at the park. No, I, I, like when you messaged me a couple days ago telling me what you were going to do, I was just like, oh, I really like that. We're outside. You have, I mean, even I don't know if people could see this on on camera, but like you yeah, I'll put a, a video. You have like a face mask on the <laughs> on the microphone. On the microphone, so I think that's cool. And then we're wearing face masks. Exactly. We have our coffee here, mm -hmm. which is great. You're a heavy coffee drinker, huh? Oh yeah, I drink this stuff like <laughs> three times a day sometimes. Uh, what is your favorite coffee? I like. I mean, if I'm gonna just drink like a just black coffee, uh -huh. just straight black coffee preferably like a medium roast I'm not too okay. huge of a dark roast person and light roast is just too light for me <laughs> um but then when it comes to just like if i'm gonna put sugar stuff like that you know any type of creamer or yeah, just yeah, yeah sugary stuff is good <laughs> i um, love sugar man years ago I actually used to work for starbucks so like oh what you did. got me hooked on coffee was the, of course the gateway the, do you guys get free coffees there uh i th yeah we would and then uh we would get discounts as well Okay, that's great. But the gateway drug for me was the Frappuccino. Yeah, I remember me asking you, like, what type of coffee do you want? Anything uh, mocha Frappuccino. Yeah, so. Thanks for the coffee. Salud. Yeah, salud. We're drinking right now high brew coffee. I've never tried really it. I've never tried it either, but it's really good. Yeah, I'm trying, like, on this podcast, like, to try different types mm -hmm. of coffee. I always ask uh, the guests on the podcast, like, mm -hmm. what coffee do they want? Because some people don't drink milk. Yeah. No, I mean... Or I'll, they I'll don't drink it. <laughs> sugar, you know. But yeah, it's so, good. I mean, it's good. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I hit you up because <laughs> I think I was searching the geo tag, the geo tag location mm -hmm. on Instagram for Pasadena. I live in mm -hmm. Pasadena, and I'm always looking for people to like either hang out mm -hmm. or talk about photography or you know just like like cool people. Yeah. And then you popped up. And your username back then was Canon Dude. Yes. So I'm like, huh, definitely a photographer. Mm -hmm. I scroll through your Instagram and yes, like you posted like Canon. And I've been using Canon all my life yeah. too. So I'm like, okay, yeah, this guy seems chill. He takes great pictures. So I hit you up. You changed your username yes. like a week, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we set up this and uh, it's incredible. Why did you change your username? Well, I mean, when I first started the account, um, you know, I, I bought the EOS R, the original uh -huh. EOS R, and at the time it was one of the most hated cameras on the it internet was. because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there was a lot of quirks about it. Uh, <laughs> and also, I'm just putting it out there, I'm not paid by Canon or anything like Nobody that. Nobody here I, is paid by Canon. We uh, just love yeah. that so, camera, yeah. You know, I bought it and I was like, at the time I was on my other account, I was shooting mostly like street photography and um, cityscapes. So I kind of got bored okay. of it. And I was like, and at the time I saw a lot of, uh, like gear accounts starting to pop up on my yeah. algorithm on yeah. my discover page so I was like oh I have a brand new camera let's try it and I kind of just did it to take a break from the other page and in four months time uh, it blew up to 15,000 in four months in four months that's insane and I didn't buy my followers or anything like that so what happened was a lot of these other bigger pages that have thousands upon thousands of followers yeah. I uh, started reposting a lot of my work. That, in turn, got people from their pages to start following me. A lot of people yeah. would start to DM me, asking me questions about, like, Canon cameras or, like, hey, I'm looking to buy this lens. This is my budget. What, you, cool. what can I do? So I, I would take the time to answer the question. So, And the reason I went with Canon Dude, originally it was going to be called Camera Nut Daily. It was a, okay. a guy obsessed with cameras posting daily yeah, yeah. content. <laughs> but I went with Canon Dude just because it was very niche. And, uh, you know, I wanted to have, like, a face behind the account because most of these other gear pages, with no disrespect to them, you don't know who's running it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you could be talking to somebody who yep. is a moderator from that is not even the account owner. So yeah, or, I kind of wanted to, to to have that available for And to for be, people. like, more personal. No? Exactly. That's cool. And so I recently changed it to D-Low Visuals. Uh, just because you know, I have I'm on, uh, on the verge of hitting 43,000 followers. That's crazy. That's and so cool. I especially now with with you know post COVID, uh, yeah. 
the the entire business landscape's really changed. I'm kind of putting myself out there more as a influencer to also specifically cool. help like small businesses. I actually have a friend of mine that I work with. His name's Adrian. He does a lot of marketing. Mm-hmm. So we, that's what he went to school for. So me and him are working together trying to okay. help small businesses because I think those were the ones that were really impacted the most. That's incredible. And okay, so you purchased the Canon EOS R before yes. that. Did you own any Canon cameras, or how did you start in the in the photography industry? So I started uh, eight years ago. Okay. I actually fell into it by accident um, during a trip to Big Bear Lake uh, uh-huh. the week of Christmas in 2012. Yeah, it was eight years ago. Um, I just started shooting on my phone just because okay. we're literally lakeside, no Wi-Fi. You're away from everybody. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'll just take some photos. And I started falling in love with the idea of just like editing them by putting like a filter and yeah, then, yeah, yeah and at the time i was using Flickr. i wasn't using instagram man yeah of course Flickr was big yeah, back yeah. in the I, day i don't i don't even know if it's still around Flickr, it is but i think like they sold a company oh, okay. or something like that happened. Yeah, i haven't heard of that name in years but yeah i used to use Flickr, so that's where i would post stuff mm-hmm. and then uh first camera i bought was a fuji uh like i forgot the name of it but it was a mega zoom it was like okay. 150 bucks then my first real DSLR was a Canon T3i. Okay. Uh, and then after that, I went to the 70D. And then my first full frame was a 6D. Uh-huh. Great camera. Um, before I went to the 6D, I actually sold the 70D, and I went over to Pentax. Okay, and that's when you... a lot of people shit on Pentax. Okay, why did you change? Why, why, you I, were I just using wanted Canon? to try something okay. different. Cool, cool, you know, cool. I, I shot Canon, and you know, yeah. you, you've used Canon before. You know, yep. you kind of get tired of the simplicity of some of the stuff, and <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, let's see what else is out there. Yes, so I bought that. I enjoyed it, but the system doesn't really have a lot of lenses. Yeah. And at the time, they were the only camera manufacturer, I think, on uh, besides Fuji that didn't do full-frame cameras. Okay. So after that, shooting for about a year, I went to, I bought, I bought the 6D, and that's the year I actually started doing stuff uh, professionally for like Vice Munchies, Got Milk. Nice. Um, so little by little, kind of like getting my foot out there. That's great. How, how did you approach these companies, or did they approach you? So with Vice Munchies, uh, my friend Javier Cabral, he's actually the editor at LA Taco now. Okay, uh, that's he was amazing. The, he was the uh, uh, West Coast editor for Vice Munchies, and at the time I was working at this place called Neon Retro Arcade in Pasadena. Great place. Which I did a lot of the social media for there. I, uh-huh. I may have seen you there, probably not, I'm not sure. Maybe. I, I've been there a couple of times yeah. with my wife. It's oh, an okay. amazing place here in yeah, it's, Old it's Town fun. Pasadena. Um, but he was always a uh, frequent there and that's how we got started, uh, to get to know each other, especially cause we both love street fighter too. And he's, <laughs> okay. we would always play for hours <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and it would always go back and forth. Sometimes he'd kick my butt and then I'd kick his ass <laughs> and vice versa. That sounds incredible. Um, but that's how I kind of fell into it. He just hit me up one day. He's like, Hey, I need a photographer for this event. That's like cool. five minutes from your house. Like, can you do it? I was like, yeah. So they paid me and just little by little like that. But going back to the camera stuff, um, I eventually bought a uh, Panasonic GH5 and a uh-huh. Canon 5D Mark IV. Okay. Initially, I bought the 5D Mark IV to do for both Media. hybrid shooting, like video and stills. Okay. But much like the EOS R, it's, it has 4K that's heavily cropped. Yeah, I hate was that a, crop. There was a lot of limitations to it. So I bought the GH5 to be kind of like my dedicated camera for okay. video. Yeah. Fantastic camera. But the problem I saw was, like, I got tired of carrying... Two cameras, two <laughs> yeah, different lenses, yep. two separate battery charges, yeah. batteries, etc. And then changing like menus, right? Like yeah. you are a Canon, like shooting stills, and then if you need to do video, then you're like, oh shit, I, it's like a different language. Yeah. It's Although like, Panasonic did a great job because their menu was completely touch screen, so you could actually okay. touch to change settings. Oh, that's great. So it felt like a Canon camera. Um, and then eventually I sold both, switched to Sony, shot exclusively for Sony for. Um, uh, in 2018 for a full year, shot okay. weddings and everything, uh, with the A7R3 and the A7 III. Okay. Great cameras. I just did not fall in love with the system like I thought I would. <laughs> that's what I've heard. I've never uh, used Sony, but that's what I what my, I My big gripe, I like big, beefy camera bodies and lenses. Yeah. So, like, having the really small body, uh, especially when I shot my friend's wedding, I had the 24 to 72 8 Okay. With a flash. hmm And, you know, the Sony bodies are pretty small. I don't know about the the A7 R4, A9 Mark II, and the newly announced A7S III uh-huh. uh, in terms of ergonomics, but with the A7 R3 and A7 III, uh, I didn't have a spot for my pinky. 
Oh, so was it actually was, small? Yeah, it was that small. Oh. Um, so it was just it got really uncomfortable shooting a yeah. wedding for eight hours. Um, and I just felt like the I could never get like sharp results out of it. And then video is just completely different language for me. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, a lot of the colors are off. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sell it. <laughs> and at the time, Canon already had uh, started selling the EOS R. So I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to buy the EOS R. Yeah. Great and camera. And sure enough, I bought it. I enjoyed it. And that's what started Canon Dude. Now it's DL, DLO Visuals. This happened over the span of a year. And then I, I see you posting about the RP as well. Yes. Do you have that one too? Yes. Okay. You mentioned that the Sony, there's no space for your pinky. The RP is pretty small too. Because I, I purchased mm -hmm. that camera uh, when it was announced because it was so cheap. Yeah, it was $1,000. Like, it's exactly. great. I'm like full frame mm -hmm. and Canon. Like I've used Canon all my life since I started doing uh, analog photography. Yeah. And I've had like uh, the T3i, yeah. the 60D, then the Mark III, the 5D Mark III, and then the 5D Mark IV. Mm -hmm. And then I got the RP. Mm -hmm. And when I got it, it included that uh, adapter, like for the pinky. Oh, the, for the grip extension, yeah. Yeah, which my, my hand is pretty small, so I was fine. <laughs> I was yeah. fine without the adapter. And then I realized that like for a couple hundred more bucks, I could get the R. Mm -hmm. So I sold the RP and I got the R. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's a great camera. Uh, but we, yeah, the, yeah, I mean, the RP is fantastic. Like for me, I have small hands, so yeah. like it, the grip's deep enough so I have space for all my fingers. Okay. Um, and I do like that they have that grip extension for bigger hands. Yeah, yeah, just in case you need it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like uh, I've been posting about it just because a lot of people... Because uh, my friend Adrian, actually, that was his first full-frame camera that he bought. Incredible first first full frame yeah, camera. exactly and That's so great. a lot of people say like oh it's not a professional camera because you can't do this this and that but then it's just like but like he's making money yeah you, you can it, do it's like it doesn't matter the tool as long yeah. as you know what you're doing exactly what were they saying that you cannot do with the rp i was like oh well the video's like heavily cropped in 4k he's like well i don't i don't you, shoot 4k it's yeah. 1080. and like, you know what i've noticed a lot of people that um because it the same thing happened with the r yeah they were like uh the r doesn't have this or or you cannot do this it's like Matt, do you actually do like make videos and mm -hmm. shoot photography or do you just read the spec list and just trash uh, yeah anybody? exactly it's like use the camera just you can do anything it's interesting that you bring that up because uh i don't know if you watch this youtuber um, armando ferreira of course mondo bites yeah yeah, yeah. he's shout great out to him. he's a fantastic guy incredible. so he kind of like professionally called out a lot of the youtubers because <laughs> Good. there Good. was a lot of people that at the time when the eos r came out we're basically saying like, yeah, you know, there's a lot of cons to it. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna pass it up. And now those same people bought an EOS R. Now that the the Trinity of lenses are out, like oh, the 24, yeah, yeah. 70, 15, 35, 70, 200, mm -hmm. and are using it as kind of like their YouTube cam. Yep. And he, you know, he just kind of called them out. Like, and I think it was on when he was talking about the uh, EOS R5 and like the overheating and all that, mm -hmm. which with the overheating, <laughs> when I shot with the A7R3, first, uh, gig I shot with it was for LA Food Fest doing video. Yeah. And, you know, just very stylized. Think of like the most like Peter McKinnon esque video you could think of. Okay. That's what they wanted. I was like, okay, I'll shoot that. So I shot it with the A7R3 and it overheated like 30 minutes after use. It uh, did. Shooting 4K and okay. a mix of 4K and 120 frames a second. Yeah. Um, you know, it was like 100 degrees outside. There uh -huh. was barely any shade. So yeah, obviously it's going to overheat. Of course. Yeah. But, you know, 30 minutes really isn't too much time for it to overheat, but it's still overheated. I had to shut it down for a few minutes, okay. let it cool down. I threw it in my bag because it was shaded in there. But were you fine? Like, did you lo lose that, the job for that? Like, for turning it off and then waiting? Yeah, like, a it was bit? fine. You like, were fine. It, it, here's the thing with a lot of people saying, like, oh, well, the new Canon's overheats. Like, okay, any camera's going to overheat. Your phone yeah. overheats if you yep. shoot too much. Oh, video. yeah, totally. Or if you're on the phone or just talking to somebody on the phone. Yeah. It gets hot. That's just how electronics work. But it's you. It's up to you as a creative individual, as the person that is getting paid to do this gig, yeah. to find out what the issues are of, of this particular camera, because every yeah. camera has its issues, and find solutions for them. Because that's what you're getting paid to do. Like you know, yep. they they're like you know, if you're shooting a wedding, for example, people are entrusting you to get the shot and like have everything kind of like taken care of, so they could just focus on the ceremony yeah. and the guests totally. and all that. So obviously you're going to want to pack extra bodies. Of course. It's like shooting a wedding with just one, uh, like, 
like one SD card. Yeah. Oh man, and, I would and your, go. If your camera takes two SD cards, you're only gonna yeah. use one. I'm very ang I'm a very anxious person. Yeah. So I take like extra stuff. Yeah, I like, have a lot of SD cards. Yeah, like even today, I'm like, okay, I packed like two extra cables just yeah. in case like one cable stopped working or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of photographers are the same way. Yeah. Like, like, as you said, like we are problem solvers, mm -hmm. like a wedding, like we need to solve any problem that's around, like with light, like where is the sun, exactly. uh, like everything. So as you mentioned, like if it, like electronics uh, overheat, mm -hmm. so we should already know that and um, like prepare in advance, like to, towards the situation. Yeah. And also it's just like. You look at the R5, and I know the R6 also overheats as well, uh, shooting 4K60 and all that. That's you know, but it's just like you look at the specs of these cameras, more so on the R5. Yeah. Are you surprised that a camera that is <laughs> a, basically like a, a mirrorless style DSLR that shoots 8K raw? 8K. That's 8K insane. Raw, That's insane. In body, has IBIS, can do 4K120, <laughs> 4K60, full frame, no crop. Has dual card slots, all that, all that jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you surprised it overheats <laughs> because it shoots 8K? I am wrong? not, but in most forums I read, yeah, everyone is like, "Why does it overheat?" Like, Canon doesn't like, Come listen. On, like, are you are you dumb? <laughs> yeah, it's like, wait a sec. Okay, Canon listen to every one of you. Yeah. Like, you guys wanted like so many like good specs on the camera. Like, Canon gave it to you, mm -hmm. and now you're like, "Oh, but it overheats." It's like, dude, come on. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's like, I know Sony just announced the a7 III yeah. was yesterday, actually. You know, yes. I was talking to my friend about it, because uh, he shoots on Sony, he does okay. a wedding video, and he's super excited for it. He's like, yeah, man, like, at the end of the day, just the camera makes you happy, and that's what you want to use. Of course. And, and every camera, like, you can work with any camera. Exactly. Like, even, like, you don't need the R5 or the R6 to do great work. Yeah. Like, the Canon RP or the Sony equivalent, like, yeah. they have, like, that. I mean, like, I shot a wedding, like, about two, three weeks ago on the RP for okay. video and Great. that was that how did that go it, that it went well like it ended up being my a cam on accident just because uh um, nice i didn't re like they didn't really communicate when the wedding was exactly gonna start it was a backyard wedding okay okay um so nothing crazy but it handled you know the ceremony like a like a champ yeah. and i did some of the uh wedding interviews afterwards on that camera as well did it work great? Looks, yeah footage looks great i could have i should have had an nd filter on that lens i was using okay um because some of my highlights were a little blown out, but the footage was salvageable. Uh, I was still able to salvage the footage, so that's not great. a big issue. And you know what? Like most of the time, like the like the clients, mm -hmm. like they don't see stuff that we mm -hmm. see. Like we're like, oh shit! But my highlights or my shadows or things like that. I think the client wants like a cool video, like in, in mm -hmm. the wedding, like of them and like catching great moments. They're yeah. not like, oh, but why did you why you didn't shoot 4K 60 frames per second or 8K or shit like that? Yeah. And then it's just like I think the big thing is like okay, is the f image in focus? Yeah, exactly. And exactly. Does, it, does it look pretty? Yep. That's and it. That's it. Did you do a good edit? Yeah. That's fine. They don't ask you like, mm -mm. but what camera are you using? What lens are you using? Like yeah, I, I, I think I feel I feel clients that'll ask that are usually ones that will usually have a high budget, you know, for something like a red or like yeah. a oh, okay. Alexa. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, really up there. Yeah. And, but, you know, for most wedding sh uh, weddings, at least the weddings I've shot over the mm -hmm. years, they, they really don't care. They're just <laughs> like, okay, just do a good job. Cool. Yeah. Done. And I'm sure they see your portfolio before. Yeah, like exactly. they see the videos you've, you've done and they're like, I'm positive they don't ask what camera did you use? Mm -hmm. Or maybe like if the, like if one of the, like the bride or groom or whoever, it's a photographer they might ask like oh yeah just to know like what camera are you using yeah but yeah and do you shoot weddings is that what you do or yeah so i kind of shoot a little bit of everything um but the stuff i mainly shoot right now is mostly like product photography yeah. just because like, like i was mentioning earlier everything kind of shifted with covid um that wedding i shot a couple weeks ago the backyard wedding was the first mm -hmm. wedding i've shot all year Okay. Um, yeah, this year and, has been crazy. Yeah, so I've shot weddings, I've shot food photography, I've shot product photography, mm -hmm. uh, more so particularly coffee because I love coffee. I know I've seen um, that. The landscapes, cityscapes, portraits. Um, had Milky Way shots years ago from when I went to Joshua Tree. I just cannot find them for the life of me. No way. Uh, so I don't know if I backed them up or not. But <laughs> oh shoot! 
You know how it is. You have yeah. a bunch of hard drives. Like, oh, I'm just going to dump it in this one. You just never really, like, categorize everything. I know. How, how do you work on that? How do you organize all the pictures you take? I mean, right now, I've gotten pretty bad about it just because, like, <laughs> I don't go out as often. So yeah. I'll just, like, I'll just create a photo folder called, like, photo dump. And okay. then I'll just dump everything in there. And then if that one gets, like, full or if I need to move it to my hard drive, I'll just create another folder called Photo Dump 2. <laughs> I do the same thing. Uh, if it's a paying client, then I'll make one specifically for that client. Perfect. And if it's going to be, like, repeated work, then I'll make one based off of the date. Okay. And then put it under that client's folder. But for most of the stuff that you see on Instagram that I share, I kind of just... Just I'm dump a, it. I'm a hot, disorganized mess. <laughs> Man, I am too. And sometimes it gets crazy because I'm trying to find, like, the specific shoot yeah. or the specific picture. I'm like, holy shit, when did I do this? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to be more disciplined, more, like, responsible, like, uh, organizing my files. But mm -hmm. it just, it's overwhelming. It, it's tough sometimes. Yeah. And then, for instance, like, you're doing YouTube videos, too. Yeah. So you don't, you, you have your pictures. I'm sure you have the raw files, the JPEGs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the video footage for your mm -hmm. for your YouTube, the audio, and all of this, it gets overwhelming. Yeah, it's just like that. Like with my videos recently, I actually I have an XLR mic at home. Okay. But I I just wanted to eliminate the step of like syncing audio and post. And granted, if you use XLR cables, audio is a lot higher quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just bought a one of those uh, XLR to 3.5 millimeter with an extension cable okay, just to plug perfect. it into my camera. Just because, like, I don't have to sync audio anymore. <laughs> I know, man. Just because it's, it's like, uh, you know, especially right now, because I'm kind of figuring out, like, where I want to yeah. take the channel. I, I don't want to, I guess, put as much effort into it. Okay, if, I see. Uh, I guess more, not actually, no, not effort, but more, like, streamline everything. So it's just, yeah. like, um, you know, the easier it is to do something, the more likely you're going to do it. Of course. that That's what happened to me. I started a YouTube channel, too. Mm -hmm. And I was, like... I watch YouTube a lot, yeah. right? Like this YouTubers like Peter McKinnon yeah. and stuff like that. And I'm like, my videos need to be perfect. And what microphone do I need? And I try like, I tried too much, yeah. like to mimic that. And then I was like too overwhelmed that I didn't want to do the videos anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm like, shit, but I need to, to use this microphone. I need to do it with this tripod. I need to do it like slow motion. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, nah, like I should just do the content. Yeah. Like it should always be the content instead of like of worrying about how are you going to edit yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Like with me, that's kind of how I ended up falling into debt. Uh, it was just because I would see XYZ YouTuber using the new camera. I was like, yeah. I need that because it's going to make know. me a better photographer or videographer. Yeah. And it's just like, no, at the end of the day, it's like your skills that are going to make you that I get to that level. It's yep. not the camera. The camera is just a tool. Totally. But, you know, over over the years, of just buying cameras and reselling them. It's just like <laughs> I accumulated a lot of debt for Whoa. gear. Yeah. Um, so it's like, thankfully, I've paid off most of it. So okay, great. I'm on track to getting out of debt, hopefully, by the end of the year. Fingers crossed. Um, Good. But, yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, you see a lot of YouTubers using these, yeah. these cameras and uh, toys and equipment. And they're like, I need that. <laughs> like, the one of the things I actually regretted buying... Um, well, two things actually uh -huh. was my Ronin S, which I sold because okay. I, I literally use it twice, <laughs> and a uh, Atomos Ninja Five okay. uh, external recorder. Because uh, for yeah. those of you who shoot with the SR, if you plug it in via HDMI, you could do up to 10 bit recording. Okay. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Used it a couple times. And then did you sell it? And I sold that as well. I got okay. most of my money back, so which that's is good. good. Where do you, where do you sell your stuff? Uh, I use Facebook Marketplace. Man, it's great, right? Yeah, it's so convenient. You just put the price up there, some nice photos. Yeah. And then if people are interested, they'll hit you up, and then they'll try to negotiate some pricing. Yeah. My rule of thumb, and I actually learned this from my friend Jason, is whatever your list price is, let's say seven hundred dollars. Uh. Put that as as the price, but then let's say you're willing to take say 650 for mm -hmm. it then that'll be like the minimum that you want just don't advertise that you yeah, want yeah of, course, of course of course of course because you want to try to get 700 <laughs> but if someone low balls you and they say oh, i'll give you 734 you're like okay fuck it <laughs> yeah or or something close to it or a little bit in the middle yeah uh then some That's money's good. better than no money of course i recently started using facebook market mm -hmm. i don't have a facebook mm -hmm. so so I was not aware of this Facebook market mm -hmm. until I hear I heard it from some uh, from my uncle. He was like, "Oh yeah, I've been selling a lot of like my furniture in Facebook yeah. market," and I'm like, "Does that work?" He's like, "I posted and like five minutes later, there's someone already asking." Yeah. So I'm like, "Huh, I'm I'm gonna try it." So I made the Facebook. Well, I had that account, but I've never yeah. I never used Facebook. 
So I had my account already, and I, I, I sold my 5D Mark IV, mm -hmm. not on Facebook Market, like through Reddit. Oh, okay. Because that's like the place that I knew that people would buy stuff. But then I still had the battery pack for the 5D Mark IV. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, huh, like I'm going to post it on Facebook Market. Like five minutes later, someone was like, hey, would you take this much? I'm mm -hmm. like, sure. We met at a McDonald's and that's it. Like it yeah, was so it's, simple. It's always easy to just find a place to to meet publicly yeah. or meet halfway. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I always encourage people to bring a friend just just in of case because you know there's always those shady people. I know. <laughs> uh, the the thing that my friend told me cuz he's sold a lot of equipment in the past uh -huh. and this didn't happen to him but it happened to a friend of his. Um, when it comes to selling equipment, he always suggested to make them pay cash. Yeah. Never Venmo yeah, yeah, or yeah. PayPal or anything like that because Let's say I buy a camera off of you, okay, and I, I PayPal you 700 bucks. Yeah. Then I'm going to hit up PayPal and say, hey, this is a fraudulent charge. Huh. They're going to dispute it. Then you're down 700 bucks on a camera. And the camera. So that happened to a friend of his who ended oh, up no. losing several thousand dollars. What? No way. In, uh, in scammers. So he says, just ask for cash. Yeah. Because, yeah, there are people that could potentially produce counterfeit bills. But that's why you have the pen. Oh, yeah. Oh, you have it? Yeah, like, so you I always it? carry it with me. That's so if, smart. Just because, just you know, working retail for so long and, like, working with <laughs> You learn a lot arcade, of things. And I, you know, I, like I said, I used to work for Starbucks. You kind of <laughs> learn a lot when it comes to spotting fake bills. Do you guys get a lot of fake bills, like, uh, in the places that you've worked at? Uh, more so at, uh, when I was working at Starbucks, we would get a lot of fake bills, especially during what? the holidays. Like, we got a $20 bill one time where the, the face was the opposite direction. <laughs> oh, my God, and really? no one caught it until, like, it was no. already too late. It's crazy. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, so that's the very holidays, common. Typically, you get a lot more fake bills. Man, I've never thought that it was that common. But um, if I sell anything through Facebook Market, I'll take one of those pens. Yeah. Like, I, I'll buy one. I haven't sold anything, like, very expensive. Mm -hmm. Like, the battery pack, I sold it for 130 Yeah. Which was the same price that you can get it like at those uh, used camera websites like MPB and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was a hundred bucks. Like I hope the bill is is uh, not fake. I still have it, <laughs> so I hope it's not fake. I but think, I'm sure. Yeah, I think it's it'll fine. be fine. Just, if not, just take it to the liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, hey, I'm gonna buy this. <laughs> yeah, no, that's crazy. And um, talking about the R5 and the R6. Mm -hmm. Because I'm very excited about this camera. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, I pre-ordered the R6 the day the day The day, day off. off. Okay. So I made a mistake. So I had the 5D Mark IV yeah. and the R. And then I'm like, I won't buy, I won't pre-order until I sell them for the 5D Mark IV. Because I don't have the money like yeah. to buy either one, like full price. I'm like, I have to sell my, my 5D Mark IV. And then I'm like, uh, uh, like I announced it on Reddit. Nobody wanted it. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, geez, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to sell it. So I didn't pre-order the day of the pre-order. Then, like one day after, the camera got sold, the 5D Mark IV. So I'm like, okay, now I can pre-order, which was only one day after the pre-order started. I checked today, uh, the BNH order, and it says back ordered. Hmm. So I'm not gonna be the like the first batch that they give the camera to. Yeah. So I don't know when when they're gonna. I sent mean, the know. second batches and you know i've gotten conflicting reports on it because um a couple days ago i was uh, over in um over in riverside at uh uh -huh. at image one camera i think that's okay. how you oh i saw your instagram yeah, yeah you were trying out the, the the r5 and r6 right yeah because um the the canon representative that went down there was at sammy's camera about two or three weeks prior but the reason yeah, i yeah. didn't go that week was because i had a COVID scare so i had to self-isolate okay. yeah, thankfully yeah. everyone in my family tested negative that's great great um, to hear but uh so i hit her up and i was like hey like let me know when you're gonna be in town again i go yeah. i would like to go demo it out and she's like oh, i'm gonna be here uh at riverside at this time uh this coming weekend i was like okay cool so yeah, right yeah. there gotta try it and the, I guess the store manager was saying that Canon has never had this much demand for a camera before. That <laughs> really? They, they, they're expecting it to be like on back order for the people that get it until probably like sometime next year. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's insane. Uh, again, don't quote me on this. Yeah, yeah. This is what the guy was saying. I think it was just exaggerating it so I could pre-order <laughs> it. Because I, like when I, I saw that the pre-orders went live, I called up Sammy's camera over here in Pasadena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they put me down for the R6. And they told me, it's like, oh yeah, you're one of like the first ones for the Great. R6. Because everyone went for the 5. 
Yeah, true. Because the R6 comes out, when does it come out? I believe at the end of August. Which is in a month. Yeah. Just totally fine. And maybe they'll release it sooner, hopefully. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> but uh, it's one month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I. the R5 is supposedly shipping tomorrow. Yeah, that's what I just saw. So but, we'll see. But then, uh, yeah, I'm guessing a lot of people pre-ordered because my order says back-ordered, yeah. which is fine. You know why? Because uh, I have more time like to save money. Yeah. <laughs> because to be honest, even though I'm using the money that I got from the 5D Mark IV, mm -hmm. and I'm selling like furniture that I don't use like on Facebook Market, yeah. like, just like to, to like for me not to give that like m more money, you know? Yeah. Uh, so... I'm okay if I don't get the camera tomorrow because I have more time like to save that money. Yeah, and, and it's gonna be like less uh, it's pressure. Gonna hurt a little less, I think. Yeah, because it, it's man, it's so expensive. Yeah, the only is. reason why I got it through B and H is because I have that pay boo card that oh, okay. avoids so the tax. You, you don't pay the taxes. So I'm like, okay, the tax is like what three three hundred and fifty dollars just for the camera or something like that. Yeah. So actually, I'll share this cool thing that um, the guys over at uh, my camera shop told me. So most camera shops i don't know if, if it's in person or online as well uh, at least with me with the shop that i usually go to they had me fill out this thing called a uh, teleproduction waiver okay so what that basically does is if you have a business uh that shoots like photography and video yeah. uh you could basically avoid paying full tax so no for way. example here in pasadena i believe the tax is like 10 percent yeah because I have that waiver, I usually pay like maybe no more than five percent. No way! So That's I incredible. usually end up saving some money uh, in great. the long run when I'm buying. Equipment. I didn't know that. Otherwise, I would have called Sammy's because mm -hmm. I love Sammy's. Yeah, like Sammy's is great. Like they're I forgot how we got on that conversation, but okay. they're like, oh yeah, let's sign you up for this. It's like, oh okay. You know, the thing is, like, I think we like, for instance, on my case, I don't, I didn't ask. I remember I got that Canon EOS R from them mm -hmm. because I got a mail. Uh, to my house from mm -hmm. Sammy's that said, no tax weekend. Get the oh, yeah, EOS I love, those, I love those weekends. I know, I know, me too. So I'm like, no tax. So then I would rather go to Sammy's mm -hmm. and uh, give them my business instead of like a B&H yeah. or something uh, out of my like local zone. So I went to Sammy's and I got the R because they had no tax. Mm -hmm. But I didn't ask about the R5 or anything like that. That's why I got it from through B&H mm -hmm. because of that pay boo yeah. card thing. Yeah, and like when I called uh, Sammy's the day uh, of the like formal announcement for the R5 and R6, I asked them like, do I have to put any money down? Because you know, uh -huh. at the time I didn't have it. And I'm currently on an unemployment, and so I've yeah. been saving up some money because you yeah, know yeah. I, I said I was like, okay, I'm gonna buy either one, but I'm gonna sell my EOS R, so I traded it into them. I saw, I saw. And they they gave me they gave me a good amount. Um, That's good. Uh, but. You know, I asked them, like, hey, uh, do I have to put the full amount down? How's it work? It's like, no, we'll just put your name down. And, like, when it gets here, you just come by. That's it? Like, All right, yeah. Like, not even 100 bucks, like, nothing. Nothing. That's great. So, I, I don't know how, if it's on B&H, like, you have to, like, put the credit card down with the amount I on it. I did on the pre-order. Like, as I said, I have the pay boo, which avoids the tax, which is not a credit card. It's, like, it's weird because you have to pay the full amount that month. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess you can, like, not pay the full amount, but then you'll get, like, super high interest rate yeah like 29 percent interest rate which doesn't make sense like if you're trying to avoid the tax like you mm -hmm. pay it off like that same month and the like it went through like mm -hmm. for the pre-order but they didn't take the money like i haven't gotten a statement that i owe oh, 38 so I, so I, I guess when the camera ships they'll charge exactly it? Okay. when the camera that's, ships that's pretty cool then I'll get the statement on my card that says you owe thirty eight ninety nine. You have one month to pay. Okay. Otherwise, like you'll get an interest rate. And but yeah, so far I haven't received any email. Well, I mean that's good. <laughs> it's fine. You'll have you'll have the money hopefully by then. Yeah, no, and it's good because, like during this COVID situation, like who am I gonna shoot? Like where am I gonna go? Yeah, it's it's tough right now. Like it's so tough, man. Like even like like doing this podcast, I always. Like, I don't want to put you in jeopardy or, like, like any of that. Like, I I take the, I took the COVID test. I yeah. it was negative. And, and, but even that, like, it's, I don't find it, like, cool, like, getting people out of their homes or, like, for me to shoot, you know? Yeah, and, like, for example, <clears throat> like, uh, with, my, with my family situation with the COVID scare, so what happened was my mom took a friend of hers to go get tested. Okay. Uh, the week prior, he had symptoms. Uh-huh. Fever, cough, all that crap. Yeah. He didn't tell my mom. Oh. So my mom didn't find out until after the fact. Thankfully, no they were both wearing masks in the car. Okay, good, great. Because, uh, you know, he said, you know what? 
I had some, uh, like, you know, let, let's be safe. Yeah, of course. Like, let, let's of course. be really safe. So I was like, okay, so for people that say that masks don't work, they do work. They, they do, Because totally. um, when my mom found out, like, two days after that he tested positive, he, uh, you know, he's, so he kind of, like, told my mom. I was like, oh, yeah, I had symptoms the week before. I was like, what the fuck? Why didn't you tell oh, us? Oh, my gosh. That's so kind of irresp- irresponsible. <laughs> myself and my girlfriend all self-isolated yeah. for two weeks. Yeah. Uh, and... You know, we all got tested. We all came back negative, which is okay. great. So, but we still had we we still did the full like two weeks just to be safe because yeah. you know because when we were talking to a doctor, because mom was going to try to go get it done through her clinic. Uh huh. Doctor says like, well, since you don't have symptoms right now, we're not going to test you. But typically, mm. symptoms will appear after five days. At the time, it was already day number four. Okay. Um, when she was on the phone with him. So we just waited and waited. We got our tests. Uh, I did mine through CVS. She did hers oh, yeah, through yeah. the city, and so did my girlfriend. Okay. And, um, you know, it, it was just, you can't trust people to be responsible and say, hey, I, know. I had this. Uh, and then a lot of people not wanting to wear the mask. I mean, I don't get it because, I mean, how long are you going to wear the mask? Like, you go to the grocery store for, what, an hour? Yeah. Like, an hour and 30 minutes max? That's... The, the amount you need to wear the mask and even then it's like you look at people that work in the hospitals like doctors yeah. and physicians they wear masks for hours like i'm talking about like maybe 12 hours yep and then also don't quote me on this because you know, i'm kind of just speaking out of my ass here um but it's like you know if you see a lot of these people that are medical professionals working in an industry where they are very uh exposed to yeah. a lot of the stuff that's out there like with the virus and everything the flu etc and they wear masks for 12 hours a day, and you tell me you can't wear it for maybe 30 minutes. It's I just know. Like, come on, man. I know. It's just like let's say like, and a lot of people say like, oh, because COVID is fake or whatever. Even if it was fake, or even if whatever, which I don't think it's fake, yeah. but even if it was, just wear the mask. Yeah. You know, and I don't know if you saw my short film, uh, Seven Days, on Instagram. I have not. Where is that one? It's on Instagram YouTube? and on my YouTube as well. Okay. So the reason I made that is because my grandma was uh, one of the people uh, in April that passed away from COVID. Oh, she I'm, I'm so it. sorry to, oh, thank, to thank hear you, that. Thank you, man. And at the time, I had a lot of friends and family that were close to us saying, yeah. like, oh, this whole thing is a fucking hoax. And, yeah, you know, skepticism all yeah. over. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to film my mom's journey from like finding out that my grandma had it to ultimately when she passed oh. and you know i just wanted to get really raw and real i had my mom like uh, like she even told me like the day that my grandma passed away she's like get your camera and film me because i want Whoa. people to see this that this shit is real Man, that's incredible that you can that you and can do that. you know it was a super short film like two minutes long yeah. dumped it on instagram that was kind of like my my middle finger to everyone that's a yeah. denier because you know I'm, I'm showing something very personal and then the news picked it up. Oh, that's and incredible. And so, like, this thing just blew up. Like, I, And a lot of my family, the same people that were talking and saying shit that this is whole, the whole thing was fake. like, oh, you're just using grandma as a way to get like, no, rich and famous. Just no, like, no, no. Like, I wish I was getting rich and famous from this, but no, like, I'm actually doing this because you guys don't shut the fuck up. Exactly. About this whole thing being a hoax totally. when your grandma died from it. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, like, if this bothers you, then... Fuck you. Sorry. Of course. <laughs> That's incredible that you that you made that that yeah. film um, to educate people. Yeah, exactly. You know? I, like I feel like, you know, especially because I have the huge following. Like I felt some sort of um, responsibility. That's what I was gonna about to, to say. To kind of like say, okay, look, this stuff is real. Yeah. People are dying. I don't yeah. care about your opinion. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, no one's opinion matters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but just wear a mask, stay safe, and be respectful for the people that are actually in mourning that of have course. lost a loved one. Of course. Like, don't be yelling that it's a hoax or fake or yeah, anything or like that. If you, if you think that, keep it to yourself and just wear a mask. Yeah. Like or, just, or just stay indoors. Exactly. No one wants to see you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> totally. But you know what? That thing that you say, like, you have a huge following, that is incredible because... Uh, you can educate people. Mm-hmm. And if you have good values and good ethics, I think uh, that matters a lot. And especially because of your big following, like more people see it and then they they open their mind and they're like, oh, yeah, I guess this is real, you yeah. know? Because I see a lot of influencers out there like with huge followings and they just post like they go to parties, nobody's wearing a mask. Yeah. They're just like chilling. Like 
nothing had happened. Or they're just doing stuff for clout. Exactly. And it's like, like people that have like, I don't know, like a million followers or shit like that. It's like, dude, you have this amount of followers, like post something, um, like with good values. Don't yeah. post, don't just post that you're a party swimming and there's like a hundred people around you with no masks. Yeah. Like to, to, like I actually had a, a nice little confrontation with somebody on Instagram. Uh, this is back at the peak of the Black Lives Matter protests. Okay, yeah. So there was one that happened in Highland Park, so I went to go Okay. with my girlfriend and my friend Manny to go shoot it because yeah. we wanted to shoot protests. We didn't want to go to the ones in downtown Lake just because of how crazy I, I went that to situation those. It turned. was so crazy. Oh, man. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying that the protest was the one that instated, instigated the violence. It's more of like there's a lot of people under the yeah. guise of the protesters yeah, that... Yeah, yeah. Uh, took advantage of the situation to loot and to start shit with people. So we went. It was a super peaceful protest. It was just really fun and... Well, not fun, but, like, it was just very, like, uh, overwhelming on just how much support you felt from the community for something. Yeah, to, exactly. Like a march against racism. And I shared some of the photos on Instagram because I, I, I wanted to say... I basically worded it as, like, look, as a photographer, like, we usually have to be neutral... Yeah, on totally. On subjects. Yep. You can't pick a side. Uh, you know, I've had friends that shot for Republicans and Democrats, but they never really talk about their affiliation because yeah. they're there to shoot. That's their job. That's what they're yeah. paid they're for. documenting. Exactly. We're documentarians. Yep. And, and so I basically said, like, when it comes to racism, there is no middle ground. You have to stand <laughs> against it. Of course. And some dude decided to comment saying, he's like, oh, call me a, a trash photographer, cloud chaser, because, you know, I just went to go take photos. It's like, oh, it's a photographer. And we're just like, oh, dude, you're, you're, you're garbage. And I was like. <laughs> Jesus. And, uh, you know, he's like, oh, you're just going out for the cloud. I was like, I wish I was going out for the cloud. <laughs> oh, man. And so I actually went on his Instagram. A guy shoots on 35 millimeter film. Okay. He's one of those hipster <laughs> dudes with, like, that uh, just – does not know how to manually focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I called okay. him out on it. I was like, dude, shut up. <laughs> oh, like, man. So you went for it. I, I just, dude, like, don't piss me off because I will, yeah, I will yeah, go yeah. for the throat. I'm, <laughs> I'm also an Aries and I like to fight. I am an Aries, too. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> you know, but I, I told him, like, dude, just stay in your fucking lane and shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then after I called him out, he deleted his comments. Oh, he did. Yeah, but I screenshotted everything. Um, you know, just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Of course. And then a couple weeks later, this guy went to the Hollywood protests oh he lives in la yeah he lives in la oh he went to the hollywood protests to take photos uh -huh. and, you know, he, the typical like instagram clout chase yeah, yeah, yeah like here's a photo shot on film inspirational quote okay and it's just like dude it's like you're being a hypocrite like you're, yeah, you're, you're accusing me of doing this but you're the first oh, one at the, at the biggest protest in yeah. la did you say anything i didn't say anything because i don't give yeah. a shit man. yeah yeah, like, yeah of course and I'm, why and waste I'm sharing that time? this right now just because it's like you know, it goes back to how you were saying, like, you have to use your following yes, responsibly exactly. and do, try to do good Yep. instead totally. of, like, using your following to go around and start shit with other people. I know. That's incredible. Well, one thing like that happened to me. Mm -hmm. So I told you before that we started this to record this podcast. Yeah. I've used Canon all my life, but then I started seeing the Fuji X100V on my feed. Yeah. I'm, That's I'm a like, great camera. this is a beautiful camera. This is like incredible. Then I started researching about Fuji and the versions before the X100V, mm -hmm. which was 100, what, what was it, F it was or the T? It was the X100S, which oh, was second, S. then T for third, F for four, V for five. Okay, so F. And then I started like looking at the, the pictures and the photographers that use that camera. I'm like, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting a camera that I can take everywhere. I mean, I guess you can take your camera, like any camera yeah. everywhere, right? But it's, it's super small and compact, maybe a super little bit small. bigger than your phone Yeah, that can and, easily fit in a jacket. And I loved it because it feels like an analog camera. Mm -hmm. And I started doing analog and I love it so much. Uh, I don't shoot as much as I would love to, but that's how I started photography. And then I'm like, yeah, this is gonna like take me like a step back into that analog type of thing. So I got the camera, then I started following Fuji, the, the, their Instagram. Yeah. They posted, hey, if you want us to share your images, go to this website and upload an image. And I went, I had gone to this uh, protest on downtown. Like, I, I went there, like, every day, like, to actually, like, like support the community, mm -hmm. you know? And I took my camera, I shot some pictures, and 
I took a picture of this guy just like with, with his arms like on the air and the military like in front of them, right? And I, I sent that to Fuji and then on the, on the title thing, on the, I don't know what to call it, on the, like the part the cap, where you, the caption, the caption uh, I said, uh, I went to a peaceful protest, everything was great, the community was incredible. And I am an immigrant, I'm from Mexico, I moved to United States six years ago. Mm -hmm. And I said, as an immigrant, I understand what, uh, what people are going through. Like I received like comments, like even just walking on the street, like people just yelling, like go back to your country and stuff like that. So I've received that type of comment. So I wanted to support uh, my community. Yeah. Fuji posted that caption with the picture. Holy shit, like the comments mm -hmm. were like, well, what did that guy, what, what did the photographer do in order to receive uh, uh, comments like that um, on the street? I'm like, well, I didn't reply because I'm not gonna like waste my time yeah, it's like explaining you, myself. Because yeah, most of the time people on the internet just, they're not gonna care and they're really just out there to troll and just yeah. kind of get under your skin. Yeah, and, and, and the caption said like, I faced racism in the United States and everyone was like, well, what were you doing when you were facing racism? It's not what were you doing. It's just like, just because you're... <laughs> exactly. You know, the color of your skin yeah. is different. You, you know, I didn't say anything. Yeah. I didn't come... I, I stopped reading comments. Like, there were some good ones. Like, people were saying like, oh, great picture, amazing, things like that. But a lot of them were like, well, uh, this country's not racist. Like, he's lying and shit like that. So I stopped re reading the comments. And I felt a little bad for Fuji because they, like... I'm sure they got, like, a ton of... I mean, I, I mean... I, I commend them for sharing that because it's like they're not afraid to yeah. get a conversation yes, started. Yes, exactly. Both good and bad. And that's yep. the thing I feel nowadays on some subjects, we kind of don't have middle ground yeah. <clears throat> Middle ground because uh, we don't have want to have those really heavy-hearted discussions yeah. with people um, from a space of like how you and I are just conversing, just, yeah. you know, like friends. So, you know, I commend Fuji for doing that. But yeah, I think like that. That's also why I went to the protests as well, because it's like I've experienced this racism yeah, as well. And I have sure. friends that are African American that have experienced racism. Oh, it's yeah. just like I'm gonna stand against it. Of course. Like one of the big instances I can remember, not recent, but this back when I was a kid. You know, you look at me. I, I I'm kind of white passing, unless yeah. you start hearing me talking, you hear my accent a little bit. Um, but what was uh, when I was a kid, my dad got called all kinds of nasty oh, stuff. Man. I'm not going to repeat that, obviously, because, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. even though we're swearing, I'm going to be respectful. Um, but he got called a lot of nasty stuff in front of me. And it's just like Jeez. I just never understood why people feel that way. Like, you know, I just know. because your skin color is a different com like color or complexion yep. than somebody else's who is Caucasian. Uh you know they just say the most nastiest things i know like, and i don't understand why like they don't know the people yeah exactly like and just mind your business like like if they're stay not in your lane exactly stay on your lane just respect everyone like mm -hmm. geez like that uh, but anyway yeah, yeah. but <laughs> well, talking about we're photography gonna start a political podcast no, 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 no. <laughs> this is a photography podcast we're still drinking our coffee mm -hmm. um so w w what are your future plans so now you like you have a big following on Instagram. Yeah. You're doing the YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been doing the, those YouTube videos? So the YouTube videos that I've been pumping out now have been more so because of COVID because I yeah. have the free time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think all of, all of us pre-COVID um, were always saying, it's like, oh, if only I had time to I do know. this. Uh, I know. Time to do that. And it's just like, well, I have the time now, so <laughs> I can't really make excuses. And, you know, going back to how you're saying, like, your video has to look perfect because you have to use this equipment or that, yeah. or it has to look like something that Peter McKinnon or <laughs> no. Matty Hapoya or whoever else <laughs> Incredible does video videographers. Who are, who are very talented in their own right. Yeah. Uh, you know, just uh, the thing is just start, just do it. Yeah. Like, a lot of my videos, I know for a fact they're not the greatest, uh, but I'm starting. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe 10 years from now, if I could continue to do this, they're going to get that much better. Of course. You know, it's funny. Um, so I saw a video recently from MKBHD, fantastic uh -huh. YouTuber. I think everyone knows him. Okay. From when he started over 11 years ago. Uh huh. I think he's like 25, 26. So he was probably like a teenager back then. <laughs> oh, man. And he just did videos. They look like, you know, no disrespect to him, but they look like garbage by, <laughs> okay. by, by comparison to his current videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but the fact is he started yeah and got out there and then that's what helped him get to where he is now so it's just that's incredible gotta start. i think i think that's it just start doing mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what camera you have like you can do it on your phone even yeah, i mean my my profile right now d low visuals formerly canon dude i didn't have a second camera at the time so i just yeah. shot with on my phone. iphone and i would just uh, I use uh, the Moment app to shoot raw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would just put a preset on it with light removal so it looks consistent. Yeah, That's of how course. it started. That, so that app is great. Moment. Yeah, I love it. Do you use any more apps? like for, like? for I use light removal, Moment, and then this other one called Halliday, which also Halliday. lets you shoot raw. Okay. I kind of like the controls on that one a little bit better just because they're a lot easier to okay. just, like, literally, like, you can change your settings at a push of a button. Yeah, oh, okay. That sounds good. Yeah. So Halliday? Halliday. So it's H-A-L-I-D-E. Okay, that's incredible. Yeah, I've... Um, sometimes I just have the GoPro, mm -hmm. and I just, like, film with that one. Like, yeah. the, the, the videos. I I am not very disciplined. Like, I shoot the videos, but I'm not disciplined, like, editing. Yeah. And then I just dump all the footage, and I get so overwhelmed. I'm like, oh, now I have mm -hmm. to edit. And then I do the podcast, and then, I, like, the photography. But I'm working on it. Yeah. And it's just a matter of, like, rewiring my brain. Yeah. Because I have the time, especially right now with COVID. Like, mm -hmm. I lost all my clients except one that I'm working, like, half time only. Yeah. Uh, because I'm a graphic designer, too. Yeah. So I'm only doing graphic design for part time. Mm -hmm. But I have so much time. Like, I don't even ha have a schedule right now. Like, I can work. If I want to work at 2 in the morning, I can do it. Uh, I just finish my work and that's it, you know? Mm. But I have the time and I'm trying to rewire my brain to be more organized yeah. and to, like, I've figured it out. Like, if I film a video, I have to edit, like, either right away or the next day. Otherwise, like, my mind would scatter and, like, do other, yeah. other types of stuff. Like, with me, uh, like, I've gotten really good at staying consistent with my exercise. Like, I started at the end of February, early March, uh -huh. before, before all this stuff happened. Joined the gym, lost weight shutdowns happened because of covid yeah. so i just started walking every day uh Great. like five miles a day then it whoa that's incredible then i started pushing it to about six to ten miles what D depending on like if it's cool like right now it's nice and cool so i'll probably yeah. go for my second walk later okay but this morning i did one six miles probably do four that's later incredible so i've just been staying healthy yeah um and then with regards to like staying disciplined with my content um for my instagram at least with the photography mm -hmm. aspect i try to shoot everything in bulk Okay. So let's oh, say 30, 40 photos, and then I'll have stuff ready to post uh, throughout the day or, like, throughout the throughout month. Throughout the week. So I don't month. have to worry about, like, oh, crap, I don't have anything to post today. You know, that's incredible. That's that's a great idea. No, it really is. It's a lot of work, but once you kind of, like, streamline everything, it's, it's yeah. pretty easy. And then with regards to videos, it's kind of like if I feel like it. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, because I'm a photographer first, videographer yeah. second, so. Same, uh, same. So my brain's wired a little bit differently uh versus a person that's a videographer first yeah but you know just little by little it's just like um i'm actually helping uh my friend um my friend spencer who's a writer mm -hmm. he's helping me draft up a script for my next short film that i want to work on great um but i'm waiting for the r6 to come out because i want to shoot <laughs> okay. that on the r6 to really, well one more month yeah exactly so just to really like put it through its paces yeah 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 and to try it out the, and kind of like the 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 concept that we're kind of coming up with is um you know if, it, kind of like how we were saying like you know we have the time to do a lot of stuff yes. now so it's just like if are you gonna wait for somebody to give you the opportunity to, to do something or are you gonna go do it so yeah. kind of play around with that um and i hope to get once i get the r6 start shooting and then hopefully get it done uh, probably within like September, October, hopefully. That's great. That's just because I'm going to just keep the, because I really want to just focus on the storytelling. I'm not going to do all those fancy, crazy transitions <laughs> that you see on yeah, YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just because I don't know if you follow this guy named Jesse Driftwood. Yes, of course. Guys like the B roll transition oh, man, king yes, on Instagram yes, yes, stories. Yes. He is so good. That's insane. But I think he mentioned in one of his videos on YouTube that, um, you can have all the fancy transitions, but if your story sucks, yeah, it's not it going it's, it's to make a difference. <laughs> True. Uh, so that's kind of like what I want to focus on more so is just getting the story down. Eventually, the cinematography will evolve with more yeah. experience, kind of like how my photography has changed of course. over the last eight years. Um, one question that I have for you, mm -hmm. like we're at the end of the podcast, but uh, I wanted to ask you because I see a lot of photographers 
that want to get a big following mm -hmm. and you have a big following, what tips would you give these new photographers or photographers already mm -hmm. out there that want to increase their following? Like, w w what tips work to, on mm -hmm. you or what do you think it will work? Well, for, for me, based off of my experience with running my, uh, my, my page over the last year, um, definitely find a niche that you mm -hmm. want to get really good at so for example like when i chose the name canon dude i was specifically Specific. focusing on canon cameras yeah. and answering questions regarding canon cameras i guess kind of become like the expert in that aspect yeah uh, i post consistently at least once a day minimum okay uh sometimes i'll go crazy and post two maybe three times a day but i always try to at least post once a day use really good hashtags that you know, will help spread the stuff. But don't focus on like having say something like a 5D Mark III hashtag Canon hashtag <laughs> Canon USA. Because if yeah, you look yeah. at the following on those hashtags, there's millions of people. I know. I your know. post is gonna get buried. Yep. So I have a couple like Canon, for example, to help spread it. Okay. But then also have stuff that's a little bit smaller, like maybe has a hundred thousand people following, mm -hmm. five hundred thousand or yeah. less, like ten thousand. Because then your chances of being seen on the Explore page or if somebody clicks the hashtag and just to see what the most recent post, your uh -huh. photo will be in the yeah. most recent nine. Yep, true. That's true. Uh, and just have fun with it. You know, there's no secret sauce or hacks or anything like that that you can Yeah, I like to say, do this and you get 100,000 <laughs> overnight. It's like, it's going to take time. Of course. And the big one, I guess I could also say is don't buy your followers. Yeah. Just earn them. Bust yep. your butt to do it because... Uh, Instagram is able to tell if you bought followers if yeah, people mess with your algorithm and just and aren't, spread your content. Aren't they like deleting like those? I think so. Yeah, right. So that's yeah. good. So that's don't great. don't 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 buy stuff. Just be authentic. Even every time that I get, I don't have a huge following, but every time I get a follower that I click on their uh, Instagram profile and it's mm -hmm. like it looks spam. Yeah. I'm happy that Instagram has this option that you can remove that follower. So I try to do that, like just to avoid like s spam accounts. Yeah. Like yeah, I, I get a lot of those uh, almost daily. So I usually <laughs> just I was like, okay, is this a bot? I'm gonna block it. <laughs> I or know. Or report it as spam. And then one more thing that I'm sure a lot of photographers want to hear: Do you think the equipment matters? I would say, it kind of goes both ways. So 50-50. Overall, no, it doesn't uh -huh. matter because, again, my page was started on my iPhone. Okay shot with my iPhone for yeah. months before I got a second camera. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the camera's a tool. It doesn't matter yeah. if you have a 1DX Mark III, it's a $6,000 <laughs> 6, camera, Jeez. or an R5, or the A7S III. Yeah. If, it, if you, as a creative individual, suck at what you do, yeah. whether yeah. that be photos or video, if you just don't know what the hell you're doing, having a $6,000 camera is not gonna change it. <laughs> True. Uh, it'll look good for Instagram posts, yep. but that doesn't True. mean shit. And then you'll be in a huge debt. Exactly. Now, where I say that it does matter to some extent is, yeah, like having some photo, some, uh, you know, for example, like R5's uh, 45 megapixels. Yes. So if you like to crop a lot mm. and do look very, very large prints, if yep. that is what you specifically do as a living and you know you're going to make that money back, then yeah, then yeah invest in good equipment. But like with me, for example, I invested in the R6 just because it does everything I need. Exactly. Your needs are exactly. going to be different than mine. Yeah, 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 totally. But for the most part, it does the stuff that I need taken care of. Does 4K, 60 frames, yeah. 120p, shoots really fast. That's all I need. Perfect. Dual card slots. Um, so find the best equipment that works for you. And don't worry about having the most expensive or the yeah. greatest stuff. And if you are going to buy equipment if, for your camera... Don't buy a new body. Buy better lenses because that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, the yeah. advice that uh, a lot of people told me when I first started. It's like buy good glass, eventually upgrade your body because then bodies sure. over time depreciate in value. The lenses, especially because they're, they're refreshed every, I want to say, four to five years, Yeah, uh, they usually retain their value a lot more. True. That is true. Do you use Canon lenses? or Yeah. Third so party? the only lens yeah. I use that is adapted to my uh, EOS RP is the uh, EF8514. Okay. So just because I didn't see a point of spending close to three thousand dollars on the on the eighty five one two RF, and it doesn't have image stabilization. Granted, it don't matter anymore because the new <laughs> yeah, cameras I have guess. IBIS. But yeah. you know, for roughly half the price, got a lens that's a yeah. a lot lighter, b has image stabilization, and it's just yeah. a sharp. True. So. Okay. Cool. And then just to finish up, 
where can people find your Instagram, your YouTube, or any other? So channels? I'm on predominantly on Instagram. My YouTube's still kind of a work in progress. So excuse mm -hmm. the the mess. But you can find me on youtube.com slash David Lopez Visuals. And then on Instagram, it's just uh, at DLO Visuals. That's D L O Visuals. Perfect. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being on, on this you. third episode. Look thank forward you. to hopefully doing this again. Yeah, yeah. For